Steph Curry, ridiculous performance. 47 yep. points. Yep. Do you feel bad for him? Not even a little bit. First of all. Haters. First of all, I give credit where credit's due. And now you're going to pretend like I wasn't right all along. What I tell you, Steph finally had the performance for the first time in his career in a finals game that said, oh, that's not just Steph. He actually elevated when you needed him most. He has, that's the first time he's been in five consecutive finals. I've never seen that from him. The team really needed it. He put him on his back as best he could and hit every shot and was playing out of his mind. He's 29 years old. He's learned from experience. This is a, an actual prime Steph Curry. Not only the physical gifts that haven't gone away yet, but he's got the mental, the emotional, the whole thing. Congratulations to him. But now we're going to pretend like I wasn't right about that until now, right? Now we're going to pretend that I was hating on him all along? No, I'm just telling you the truth. Now, why don't I feel sorry for him? This is what everyone else has had to deal with playing the Warriors all these years. They're always down men compared to the Warriors. They not, may not be dealing with injury all the time, but the Warriors always have more good players, and Steph always has more good players playing with him than the other guy does. They always do. The strength in numbers. That was you guys in 2015, right? Well, that's Toronto this year. <laughs> Steph Curry having to try to do it all by himself, right? So, like, offensively, it's Draymond Green and Iguodala are great players, but not, they're not offensive juggernauts. Well, that's what LeBron had to do in 2015. He had to do the same thing. Let me tell you the difference between Steph and LeBron, though. LeBron, now, when he didn't have Clay, Steph didn't win that game. LeBron won two games against that Warriors team by himself. Matthew Della Vidova was his second best player. Won two games. So, there's even another level Steph can go to here. Let me see that performance in a win when you're down everybody, basically. I'm not saying you got to win the series. If it remains like you don't have Clay, you don't have KD, I get it. I would never hold it against Steph if he didn't win the series. But now let me see Steph get to that next level, the LeBron level, where you can actually win a game, at least a game or two, against a team against whom you're overmatched because not only do you play out of your mind, but you actually elevate your whole team over that other team. He hasn't done that yet, but that's an A-plus performance from Steph last night. He gets no sympathy from me. I don't feel sorry for him. I don't even understand what the hell you're saying. <laughs> you know, first of all, and, 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 and I apologize for being under the weather the whole bit, but I'm here. Here's the deal, man. First of all, it was a game five performance where Steph Curry had 34 points, had 10 assists, and he balled in that closeout game a couple of years ago against the Cavs. I thought that was a great performance. Last night, you look at his performance, he was making shots. He shot 31. He made 14. Uh, he did with some sensational moments, and him willing to carry the team on his back the way that he did, that's fine. But to sit up there and act like, you know, this is typical, like this is what everybody else has been playing against. That's not necessarily the case. When you look at a Klay Thompson out, a Kevin Durant out, you're not only talking about 60 points, or you know, 50 to 60 points out of the lineup. You're talking about high level efficiency from the perimeter. That is gone. That's number one. Number two, Boogie Cousins, an anemic, pathetic game last night. Really, really hurt himself. One for seven after we raved about him in game two, a virtual no-show. And by the way, you couldn't jump when you were healthy. What the hell are you trying to do jumping you're running in for layups last night. What you do is you take that big backside of yours, put it in the post, drop step on Siakam and cats like that, and do a little something. But the loonies out, and Andre Iguodala hobbled, clearly dragging. You should have seen him last night. All I'm trying to say to you is this. It's not about the injuries. It's about the number of mm. injuries with guys that take Which, place. But I'll leave it at that. Hold you all are depressing me right now. I'll leave it at that right because now. we got somebody Let's bring in on. some sunshine. Kenny the Jet Smith, give it up. Y'all got him up early. I need, what's up? What's up? I need doing? someone in a good mood this morning. Man. <laughs> Wait. Y'all give, giving, uh, like... Happy shots to everybody in here. <laughs> Seven in the morning, they going like that. <laughs> Y'all exciting around here. Yeah. Stephen A is pretending to be sick, but we really know what happened. He's not sick. He's been going 12 really? rounds every day with Max Tyson. Now he's not feeling so good.
I've been going 12. I've been let you. You can joke about it all you want to. It's been more like 15, and it's literal. There's evidence with me all over the airways what I've been doing. Well, I will say this. Right. Knowing him since, what is it, 13, 14? Yeah. He's never been fake, but I'll tell you what, he he he's if he's sick, he's sick today. I'm gonna give you we're gonna give you some uh, little Yo. tea today and some chicken soup. Thank you. I got Kenny, that. let I'm me old. ask you this. Uh obviously I want you to join the conversation here. So I yeah. asked the guys, do you feel bad for Steph Curry? He drops forty seven, he has no clay, he has no K D. Bad for him? Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say I feel bad for him. I think he Right away, you could, I think when you were in the arena last night, you could see that he was going to try to do this type of effort. Because if you saw the warm up, normally to me, it seems like he warms up longer. And I yeah. saw that short and warmed up. I was like, oh, he's saving and conserving some energy. Yeah. But he, that was, that's what he had to do. There's no way around it. He creates the pace for the, what they can play at, he creates the ease that everybody else can play at if he plays at a high level. I just didn't think, you know, he got enough offensive help from anybody else. Uh, and they got the opportunities that they typically would have gotten if Clay or someone else was on the floor. And let's define what we mean when we're talking about feeling bad. To go to Max, there were times we felt bad for LeBron. Right. We felt bad for LeBron when, when Kyrie and Kevin Love went down because we saw a guy that did all he could, and you're like, damn, if he just had some help. You know, we saw that all from LeBron on several occasions. I'm saying last night the same. You looked at a guy like Steph Curry, and then you saw guys. There were some guys. Y'all like, felt bad for LeBron? Let me explain. Let me, I yeah, never I did. bad for Let me explain. Cares, but... Boogie Cousins I did not feel bad for. But I did not feel bad for Draymond Green. But what I'm saying is when I look at a Steph Curry and I'm looking at guys that are out there, you're like, this is the final. But here's they the problem. wouldn't be there. The Steph is you know? the beneficiary of being in that position. Forget about injuries. He's always crewed up better than the other guy. Every single time. Sometimes way better.